I was shocked to see how easy it can be to fly in Europe, and in this case, not even needing to talk to anyone. In the European Union, you can fly in air. There's no customs, nothing. Uh, so just file a flight plan because you're crossing international borders. This is my life jacket. All the while furthering my aviation education while on family vacation. So what's different about today, what we're going to do is take off from the grass. We're doing a procedure that we call a short field takeoff. Correct. And you're going to hear there's going to be a beeping, like a horn, right? It's going to sound like a horn. And learning with Evelyn on board requires extra detailed briefings. It's going to be pretty loud because it's going to warn us because we're going to put the landing gear up really quickly after we get off the ground, but I'm not going to change the flaps so the airplane thinks we want to land and it's going to be like, wait a minute, your landing gear is not down. And then will it be okay? It'll be okay, buddy, just so you don't wonder, what is this alarm? So don't be worrying about that is what I guess I'm saying. The Swedish VFR flying adventure continues. Gotland, Sweden. Oh. Nice. Oh, firm. Oh, That's God. good for the arrow. Yeah, okay. Welcome to Bunge. After a water crossing flight to get here with my family, we've arrived. Visiting this retired World War II military base was a highlight. So that giant hangar is where we're sleeping tonight. It's now run by a family and they welcome the general aviation community. My name is uh, Klaus Mortensen. We're at Bunge Airport on the northern part of the island of Gotland in Sweden. Klaus has promised to get me up for a flight to show me just how easy it is to fly here, but first, a 60 second tour of the very cool museum they've got based here. Ex military base uh, built in 1939, just in the beginning of the Second World War. This uh, airport is now privately owned in my family. The wooden arches are the same constructed as in the central station in Stockholm. There aren't many of these airports left uh, in Sweden, which are all original, and we try to keep it that way. They've got beautifully restored examples of almost the entire Swedish Air Force fleet. We have Swedish fighters, and all of them are Saab constructed. We have the J-29, the flying barrel, the oldest one. We have the J-32, like an attack. J-35, the Draken uh, supersonic uh, fighter. The uh, J-A-37 Vigil, uh, which is a pretty massive airplane. I was excited to find out the aircraft we'd be flying tonight was almost exactly the same as the model I'd started my powered flight training in. My mother's Cessna 150 from 66. So this is the mighty 150. Yeah. Watch out. Whoa! It's our little moped here at the airport for just flying around the airport. It's uh, super easy. That right there is a Cessna 150. That's what I did my initial training in. Haven't flown one of those since 1996. I'd started with flying gliders, and I distinctly remember the transition to this airplane feeling really intimidating and complicated, so it was a lot of fun to get back to it and see it as such a cute little thing. The goal today, aside from a sightseeing flight, is to illustrate how easy it can be to fly in the EU. This level of freedom is not what most North American pilots expect to find here. Close the door, right? The old Cessna slam, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good. The old Cessna slam. Alright, checklist in, in Swedish, so it okay. won't help you. <laughs> All clear? Check one, two, three, four. Very good. Alright. Push to talk is where? Uh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to say, um, how, do you, how do you pronounce this place? Boom, yeah. <laughs> Boom, yeah. yeah. And boom traffic, it's Tango Delta is going to taxi to hold short of 1-6 for run-up and boom. Yeah, take the grass here. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's really nice with the Cessna because it's so simple. It has nothing, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's like a moped and it's, uh, and that's what's charming about it, that it's so, uh, yeah. So. Flaps are out. Yeah. Go for three of cracks. Anything else on the list we need to check? Uh, everything looks good. And we're doing straight out and then a uh, right turn? Yeah, you can just take off and we can, um, yeah. So it'll be fly right. wherever you like. It's, uh, <laughs> okay. Uh, boom traffic, Tango Delta is about to depart runway 16 uh, for a local sightseeing flight, probably a right turn out. There we go. Yep. Alright, we're gonna get rid of the flaps. 
Yep. So while we're climbing out in the 150, I wanted to share the soft field takeoff we did the following morning when we departed in the Arrow. Clear prop. Check one, two, everybody got me? Got you. I got Hello, hello. We're gonna take us out on the grass now. Roger. Yeah. This departure was actually from an airport closer to Visby because Patrick had repositioned the airplane while the girls and I were on the ground with Klaus doing a tour and there was not a paved runway available into wind. Wait, how loud is the horn gonna be? It's not that loud, so it's uh... Mostly to warn you that it's gonna be weird and I don't want you to wonder if something's wrong and I'm not gonna be wanting to talk about it. Okay. So we call it sterile. When we're taking off like this, we don't talk about anything, we just do our job. Oh, but before we go, we're going to ask you if you're ready to go and all that stuff, but we're not at that point yet, okay? Okay. Okay, so before takeoff checks, controls. Free and correct. Flight instruments checked one more time. All right, so takeoff briefing, this is going to be a short field takeoff. We've got two notches of flaps. We're going to have the brakes on. We're going to firewall power. We're going to check we like everything, that we know it's good. And then we're going to roll, protecting the nose wheel as much as possible. Careful not to over-rotate, but we're going to hold it back fairly aggressively. So we get to that point, we're going to get up into ground effect. Once you know we're confidently in ground effect, gear is going to come up. We're going to hear the warning. Flaps are going to stay where they are. And we're going to get our speed. So we're going to look for, what, 70 or so, 80 before we start to pitch up. 70 to 75. Okay. And then we, uh, once we're climbing, flaps are going to go gently. We're not going to just dump them. Correct. I learned a lot flying with Patrick. And in this particular case, there were a bunch of firsts. Brakes are on. I'd never operated out of grass in a nose wheel airplane before. Power set. Pressure temperature is good. Here we go. Yeah. It was retractable gear and we were loaded fairly heavily. So this was a really great learning experience. Urge should not be a problem. Airspeed's alive. Thank. The arrow has a T-tail, meaning the elevator doesn't become effective until you've got a fair bit of airspeed. So it's hard to protect the nose wheel. Uh, somewhere around 55, 60 here. You should be able to get it. Uh, yeah, I got it back pretty good on. there. There she there goes. Feels, uh, perfect. Hey, gear's coming up. Yeah. As and you here hear the warn uh, gear warning horn, yeah. It is good, flaps are going away. Start with one step of flaps. And we can go all the way. Perfect. Climb with around 90 knots. That's where we're at, so it's pretty Perfect. good. Perfect. That departure flight with my family involves another water crossing, so that'll probably be its own episode. But for now, let's get back to Bunya with Klaus giving us a tour both on the ground and in the air. This is a road that's actually a runway, so the, the Swedish Air Force uses it um, sometimes for, uh, now it's just for training, but um, before this was a part of their defense system that if they couldn't use the big runway at the main airport, they uh, went to one of these road runways. If they would use, they would close off their, their, uh, the road here. It looks like some cars have fun. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's a good place to drive okay. fast. <laughs> During World War II, when the Germans were quite close here, they moved all the airplanes down to the forest because they knew that this is where they're gonna drop the bombs first. Luckily, there were nothing happening here, so. Back on board in the 150, I'm getting a taste of how free it can be here. This is just like uncontrolled airspace in the US or Canada. It's very easy. Basically, in the European Union, you can fly in here. There's no customs, nothing. Yeah, so just file a flight plan because you're crossing international borders and then you fly in here. There's no planes around, there's nobody to ask if we're, where we want to go. The airspace is uncontrolled up to flight level 9-5, so basically fly ever, however, you, however you like. And I gotta give a shout out to ForeFlight, which is now fully functional in this region and they're constantly adding new features to make it easy to fly here. As you can see, it's a magical place and it's, uh, yeah, beautiful. <laughs> And here's a chance to plug both ForeFlight and this awesome location. I think it's pretty well crimped, but do you want to take it if it needs to be yep, taken? Yep, I yep. a couple shots. Yep. Just like when flying at home, it's important to check the comments for airports for handy tips, local services, or anything else, and that applies here too. Maybe I'll try opening the window? Yeah, yeah, no problem. I could turn on this speed a little, so it's not as windy. We flew around the island of uh, Forda, uh, really towards the island. Took a look at some beaches and uh, enjoyed some nice views. 
In this case, we flew away from Visby, but if we'd gone the wrong direction, four flight airspace alerts would have helped us avoid busting that control zone. Now we can cross over to see the rocks, sir. Yeah, perfect. There is a restricted area around the, uh, yeah, the island that they can activate sometimes, and seldom, uh, I think it's only once that for the last year they've been activated. My, uh, at one time my mom landed the, the Cessna and uh, the military was waiting for her. <laughs> That's like a classic Swedish neighborhood. Yeah, I think so. Klaus is very humble and he's got a pretty impressive resume so it was really cool to fly with him. He's an A321 pilot and a key part of a new initiative called the Day Experience. They filled his Airbus last year and flew to Aero Friedrichshafen and are doing it again this year with two planes chartered from Sweden. So if you're in Sweden, check out the dayexperience.se as you don't want to miss this upcoming trip happening April 17th. Klaus and the rest of the core group that are putting these trips together are organizing them with the same positive energy that they put into coordinating the trip when my family and I were there. So I'm doing what I can to put the word out to help promote these things because it's a really cool initiative they've got going. Uh-huh. These are, but these are the, not the wood ones. It's like the thousand-year-old steps. The thousand-year-old steps? Mm-hmm. We're in the ancient town of Visby. What's cool about this is it's like a thousand years old and it's completely intact uh, because this area of Sweden did not get damaged during World War II, whereas most of Europe, ancient ruins like this are gone. And it was super cool to see these unique natural rock formations from the ground and then to be able to find them from the air in the 150 at sunset. Wow, well, even from up here you can really see they're like towering. Yeah. Yeah, those are old limestone rocks, uh, so uh, I guess a lot of countries have these famous type of uh, rocks. A lot of tourists go to see those places, it's quite unique, so... Very cool, yeah, I got it. I got shot. No doubt the flying community here is smaller than it is in North America, but it was just as welcoming as I'm used to at home. You guys are all pretty tight here in the flying community. Yeah, I mean, there's not too many around. Uh... That can take it. Yep, yep. Just get to the coast and then fall yep, out later. Yep. I see what you mean about you can just go anywhere. Yeah, yeah, it's a. God, I mean, for me, it's so easy to go up flying. It's, I mean, it's um, just to pull out the plane and go. There's nobody to ask, nobody, uh, no way to see. It makes flying fun. So. Another flying de-stressor is the graphical notums layer in ForeFlight. When you're just doing what we're doing here and flying around for fun, it's nice to be able to get this level of situational awareness to avoid busting anything. It's also deeper, probably. Yeah. Are there fish in these lakes? Uh, yeah, there is, yeah. I can really see the different color. Um, yeah, it's yeah. out there now. Yeah. This fly is still managed to be on board. That's pretty impressive. <laughs> You're flying? I got it. Yeah. Okay, so orient me, that's uh, zero 09. Yeah. So what do we want? One six is... Uh, that way? Mm, yeah, you basically towards the town and then in the wicked land 09, so uh, okay. just into the wind. Yeah. It was surreal to be landing a 150 again for the first time in a long time in the Swedish countryside. Alright, stop and drop and do yeah. it. Yeah, you can try it, yes. I usually have like a 25 degree flaps. Carpet on. Flaps coming down. Yeah. Okay, it'll be a bit of a teardrop. Yep. 25 claps? Yep. And I usually aim like at 65 uh, miles per hour. That's okay, usually good. Alright, right, blowing traffic. It's uh, Tango Delta is setting up for final 09. And we uh, go full flaps for final or you just leave uh, it there? I usually stay there, but whatever you like. Uh, you can try it with... Uh, well, I haven't landed one of these things in a long yeah. time, so you tell me what... Yeah, yeah. what no, this is quite good. And this is ideal? Yeah. yeah. We don't, we don't need to land short, this thing no. is going to land short yeah. as it is. 
Okay, so downwind check is uh, complete. We've yeah. got mags are on, carpets is on, boat mixture is rich. Well, I guess it feels like a bit of a left crosswind, eh? Yeah. Crabbing left. Yeah. Thanks a lot. That was really fun to fly one of these again. Yeah. First time I flew one of these since 1996. <laughs> and blow traffic, uh, Delta is clear of 09, taxiing on 34, back to the grass to the hangar. So over there is uh, high school. So when people fly, they just walk over the runway and begin to live there. So it's pretty neat. That's uh, pretty cool. If you'd like to explore flying here, definitely reach out to Klaus and his mom. There's information in the description, or you can put any questions you've got in the comments, and we'll try to answer them there. People like it, so quite nice. It's a free airspace. You can stay in the hangar, you can rent a car, and it's um, yeah, have a barbecue, maybe. Just, just down from a beautiful flight over this awesome island here in Sweden. It's really cool to see how the basics just really come back to you with an airplane like that. Pure, simple basic good times until the next one keep your flight chop sharp what do you use the mirror for uh, i don't know to look good <laughs> i don't know <laughs>